of composing with the cameras is 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 edges uh, when edges are crossed. Uh, it tends to cancel out the, the depth effect. Um, it, it tends to um, break the suspension of disbelief that uh, uh, one has when looking at a quality stereo image. Um, so, uh, but uh, something to to consider when shooting with parallel cameras is is one really wants to leave a buffer around um, because there is a, a lot of play in the editing stage of, of um, manipulating the parallax and one tends to be lopping off um, left and right sides and, and, and top and bottom when we do the alignment. Um, sort of aspects that don't work that well I, I, I find are, are blurry blurry objects, um, high contrast objects, um, objects that are dark. Um, one tends to, with certain display systems, one tends to have um, ghosting with, with darker, darker picture information. So when the image is, is brighter, when, you know, when one has much less of that, um, you know, there's a kind of, uh, fad right now for, for sort of uh, cinematography that plays with this aspect of depth of field and a, and a kind of blurring blurring picture planes and this is something that uh, was exploited in Avatar um, and a, a lot of enthusiasts really complained about that as, as, it, as, as it didn't really it wasn't really successful I mean it's useful for covering up um, mistakes and, and, and so on uh, you know because one can sort of blur a anomalies and, and, and things like that, but uh, it sort of um, it sort of goes against the sort of satisfying um, experience of, of stereography of just having a maximum information and if it's composed well, you know you can move all over the screen and, and it, the illusion won't be broken, although it should be broken in terms of how how your eyes are reading the picture space. So with the cameras of post-production, uh, it didn't work, so it, it, I'm not sure in, in the case of Avatar. I mean, it, it, it was probably in, in terms of, well, in both. I mean, because the, the production and the post-production is very blurry in those sorts of productions because, you know, the, the image is composed in a, in a sort of post-production environment. And, but I, I imagine they were trying to achieve something lush and aesthetic and, and didn't really care about, you know, that sort of c perception that blurred backgrounds aren't, aren't successful. I mean, I, I, I in enjoy all sorts of effects like that, but it's generally shunned in, in, um, in literature about this. Um, I, I, next thing, I'm, I'm going to talk about towing in. Um, and this is something that, um, I mean, we're all uh, aware of how, how this works and, and um, you know, some of the faults of, of using this technique. Um, you know, basically you, you have very little flexibility in, in the post-production environment of, of, of correcting. You know, when, when it's really kind of a camera person's... Um, Prerogative, and and um, you know, if they blow a shot, it, it's 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 really hard to repair because um, if it's a bit off, and st one starts to repair it, and in in a way, you can lose the whole whole effect and and basically lose the shot. Um, but it does it it does um, permit all sorts of camera. Um, uses of the camera that usually a, a parallel system won't, won't accommodate, such as extreme close-ups, um, telephoto effects that are, um, you know, where, where you can compress uh, an image plane to, to be very fat, flat, and have uh, an extensive um, amount of pictorial information in, in a very tight space. And that, 
that can be very successful. Um, now, I talked about the distortion. Um, uh, one of the, the sort of underlying guidelines of, of, of towing in is having a very good uh, preview system. Um, and this is something I could talk about uh, later if there's, if there's time to talk about uh, these sorts of uh, technologies and so on. But what, what I found uh, uh, with my, my camera system here that uh, I've been using, it, what I like about this is, is it, it, it allows for a, like, a, like a binocular view. One, or, one is looking into a binocular uh, view and one sees what one gets pretty much. So it, it makes it possible to use, um, to, to compose with a, a towing in techniques because one is seeing, you know, what the faults are um, as one makes them. Um, yeah, so, and another effect of, of uh, the towing in is, is uh, you know, there's a certain, like, flatness to certain, um, certain situations where there's a narrow interaxial um, and, and the subject is close. A certain kind of, even though there might be a stereographic effect, it, it, it tends to flatten. And having the, that sort of um, camera angle, one is able to bring out a certain roundness in, in, uh, in a subject. Um, yeah. So, uh, so this is this is, uh, you know, the illustration of the the negative parallax, and w one sees that. You know this this idea of of something popping out at the screen of the screen because um, so in terms of lenses uh, wide angles are are, are the best uh, one can't go too wide if if one uses a fisheye or, or something all sorts of distortions are introduced and uh, you know it, it it it's not not uh, Now, um, w another sort of um, foible of, of stereography is, is the sort of cardboarding effect, which uh, people tend to complain about, that it just looks like cut out planes. Um, now, this is, um, can be avoided by a kind of careful consideration of um, lens, lens angle and how uh, parallax is arranged in the... Uh, in the uh, editing stage. Uh, okay, so when we come to the editing stage, there's uh, there, you know, there's sort of order of, of alignment, and obviously time is 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 the is the chief uh, the chief element to to address. Um, it um, if there's any any mistake, even a frame mistake of, of uh, temporal disparity in the left and right views, uh, you're, it's just basically, it's just very annoying uh, for somebody to try to try to read. Uh, you know, if the if if the camera's locked down, it it's it's not so noticeable. But uh, as soon as things start to move, it, it it's it's terrible. Um, the next most important thing is is vertical alignment um, you know that that if, if there's any disparity in 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 terms of uh, vertical registry uh, it it's very difficult for the eye to uh, to to be looking at it at two different directions uh, that way um, and then the horizontal alignment is is kind of like the essence of post production um, manipulation um, um, field of view. Um, there's not usually a disparity there, but um, sometimes there's rotational disparity. One has to watch for that. Like s somehow the camera could be uh, um, crooked. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. 
one thing about um, shooting in parallel with the cameras in parallel is is it's a lot more forgiving for, uh, in in the notion that one has to create different versions of 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 a, a particular project for different screens if if one is has a huge um, display situation uh, one wants to limit the the parallax uh, generally um, one would say if if one was producing for a, a theatrical display one would be be composing for the first first row of seats um, so you know this kind of idea that it might be in the middle of the theater but it's um, and movies tend to be very conservative in, in terms of in terms of parallax but uh, um, if one is producing for a screen like this, it's, it's actually relatively small and one can have really wide parallax and, and the eye can, can process that. Um, uh, another thing that I, I've come to feel as, as important is, is, um, or, or something that helps is, is to have longer shots. Uh, there's the whole uh, reflex of watching where the eye you know is 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 actually performing quite a quite a complex task and and it tends to want to rest um, and and it's it's more satisfying for um, well one's better able to achieve a sense of immersion by by slowing down shots and and um, you know if, if there's a, a lot of cuts and um, a lot of uh, contrast in in picture planes uh, and 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 depth of parallax. Uh, the the eye gets gets quite confused and and it's tires tires them. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about t tools. Um, now it's. It, PC, the PC environments tend, tended to be a, a, a sort of more stereocentric uh, for for a lot of different reasons. A lot to do with um, the sort of legacy of NVIDIA graphics display and and OpenGL um, drivers that uh, or li libraries for stereographic rendering. Um, you know, a, a very sort of uh, prominent um, element in the stereo graphic toolkit is the stereoscopic player, uh, which is still uh, PC only, um, and that is uh, uh, you know um, maybe many of you are familiar with, but it's uh, it's it's, it's an exceptionally useful tool. Um, you know, a, a, the Adobe Creative Suite um, you know has some some quite Develop workflows for for um, stereographic editing, including a, a kind of a little bit of an obscure uh, plugin of, of of 3D glasses. Um, shown it to a few of you, and it's um, it's it's one that um, it's a bit like Neo 3D. It lets you preview different different versions of um, of uh, a stereo composition um, in different ways, and and it's very useful for for mastering. Um, um, the sort of current uh, tool Nuke Nuke X by uh, made by the Foundry, a UK company, is uh, is really the the kind of de facto uh, high end uh, production tool for integrating. It's a it's a Compositing tool uh, ostensibly, but it um, it has a it's a, a native 3D video environment, so it's it's very well suited for integrating um, 3D modeling um, with with stereographic video. Uh, it's it's a, it's an expensive product, but it's 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 very very powerful. Um,